Reality Church, here we are again, week two. Um, I don't know about you, but last week for me was it was sensational. I've got yeah. uh, uh, young Eli Cottrell here on the couch with us this morning. Yeah, so good, bro. Last yeah. week was awesome, man. How did you watch? Uh, I watched on the TV. So we've got a bit of a computer thing set up onto the actual TV for Netflix and things like that. So it was actually very, very, um, it was awesome. My kids thought I was a celebrity because I was actually up there on the, on the yeah, TV wow. for a bit. So got some, some good encouragement from, from my son there. Um, what about yourself? How did you tune in? I, I probably chose the, uh, the lazier side. I stayed in my PJs. I waited until after and I actually just got on my phone, flicked it up, airplayed it to my TV. And I actually just chilled out in bed. During worship, I stood up, of course, because I, I have to be, you know, like that. Um, but yeah, then I watched on my TV, watched the sermon, and it was really awesome, actually. It was a really engaging experience. Yeah. It, it, was, um, it was a phenomenal launch. I mean, yeah, uh, definitely. Just to give a bit of an insight, there was, um, I think it was just under 150 different households actually tuned in and logged in, which, wow. is, which is unreal. And, um, and over 500 uh, chat chat messages. So mm. the chat room was going off. So if you if you actually if you didn't get involved in that, um, I encourage you to do so this week because you know right now get get chatting now. Get those fingers on the keyboards cracking because it was actually awesome. We had uh, hosts praying for different people yeah, and, and and really just you know quoting scripture and and chatting it through. So yeah. like I said last week, you know this is now we can talk in church and we, we're encouraging it. It's actually yeah, that's it's, it's it. awesome fun. Yeah, definitely. No, it was actually a really cool feature. I was logging in and Caitlin, I even saw Caitlin said it. Hey, Eli. I hadn't even said hi to her yet, so that was funny. But no, it's actually a really awesome feature. Be able to chat, even during the sermon, people were seeing what they really grabbed from it during the sermon, which was a really cool live feedback. Yes. It was like, oh, wow, I didn't even grab what they got. Yeah. So it was really cool to be able to you know, see what other people are grabbing and I actually get more download from that as well. So that was really cool. Yeah, yeah, unreal, great message. Um, you know, we're very excited to be hearing from our senior pastor, Pastor Dan, this morning. So, yeah. um, I, it's been a couple of weeks since we've heard from Pastor Dan, and I'm really, really pumped for the, yeah. the word that he's going to bring. And I think, especially in a season like this, you know, you, you hear that, get that steadying word from the senior pastor, and mm. uh, it's exciting. I'm really pumped. Brand new series. Yeah, wow. Called Anchored, or is wow. around being anchored, wow. um, which, you know, I'm an Eagles supporter, I'm not a fan of the Dockers, yeah. so ang the whole anchor theme is, is a bit difficult for me, but you know what, Fair. I'm just choosing not to look at it. Yeah, that, yeah, that way, totally. You know I, mean? I think it's great for it at such a time as now, though. Well, that's uh, a good the, point. Yeah, okay, yeah. The, being yeah. anchored, you know. Yeah, it's probably got nothing yeah, to do with football. No, and I, it even includes being anchored at home, don't leave your home, you know, that's that's really good as well. Oh, I, I like that view on concept. it. And look, we are, yeah. you know, we, 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 I think we're being, we are being responsible. Yeah. We are um, sticking to the social distancing yeah. measures, which are extremely important. And, uh, and, and we fully endorse, in fact, hang on a minute, let me just... Um, yeah, yeah, cool. Just, there we go. Oh, look at that. Flip that around. Oh, Easy. Yeah, yeah. Cool, yeah, that's, that's, so that's the straight up 1.4, I think. Hang on, just move your head back. Oh, yeah, yep, sorry. Got it, got it. All right, so there. So adhering to guidelines, which is important. And, um, and look, I, I think, you know, the times are changing, but uh, we're, we're adapting, we're changing with them. And I'm yeah. loving seeing what all the other churches are doing. Oh, definitely. In fact, tell us a little bit about youth. So Eli's our youth pastor and, uh, you know, that's yeah. presented some challenges in this time. Yeah, it has. Hey, like youth is usually in every Friday, we gather in the youth room, we do games and all these interactions. But obviously with the limits that have been set, we really want to follow them and keep everyone healthy and safe and still have that boundary. So we've actually just set up a, a live stream and connect groups so that we're still meeting and still seeing each other, still, still checking in and making sure everyone's okay. But yeah, it really created that culture of there's still something to look forward to, still something to do together. We can still see each other's faces and mm -hmm. still play some games. We had a live stream on Friday and that went really well. We had, what was that on? So that was on Friday on Instagram Live. What's Instagram? Uh, it's just a, a social media app. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. really good. You should like, get it. Like MySpace. It's very similar, just okay. a little bit more high tech. Yeah. Yeah. That, okay. that's, cool. Yeah. So it's a lot better. Yeah. yeah. And it went well? Oh, it was fantastic. There was a lot of uh, great feedback. And uh, hey, if you've just checked out, there's 10 minutes, 10 minutes until the service starts. So cool. I'm it's not so long. keen, man. It's not 10 long. minutes. Hey, listen, I'd like to hear a bit about your week because, yeah. I mean, 
We're in a bit of a different situation. I can share a bit of a bit of about my week with the kids and that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I want to hear about yours because no kids um, live at home. Yeah. So so yep. talk me through that. How how was it? Yeah, no, nah, it's good. Hey, it's uh, isolated. It, I'm very isolated. Good. I'm uh, stuck in my room. Yep. No, I'm not actually just stuck in my room, but it's good. My family, everyone's staying home. Apart from the essentials, you know, going to work and that kind of thing. It's really different, actually. Yep. Even thinking about, oh, hey, I need to go buy this. Is that an essential? Mm. It kind of hasn't been sometimes. It's, it's really interesting. But no, it's been uh, really good. Uh, yeah, that's essential? Yeah, I definitely. Yeah. yeah, I got that previous to this whole thing. So I was well, lucky. I, did. I was I really lucky in that case. Um, but yeah, it's actually been very different, but I've been enjoying the differences and, and it's uh, definitely a challenge, but I think everyone is adjusting to it well and still being able to phone up friends, chat to them, checking in, even though you don't get that one-on-one -on -one or that group meetup, it's still, it's still good to reach out to people and, mm. and do that. So how was it for you? Oh, look, yeah, it was um, very relaxing with yeah. the kids at home from school. Uh, well, actually, no, relaxing isn't the word. That's a lie. That was a total lie. That's a joke. Uh, it was actually full on. Is wow. the best word for yep. it. So, I mean, they're, they're being, I guess, homeschooled now, doing distance learning yeah, wow. through, through the iPads and whatnot. Um, um, Eliza even actually gave, nearly gave my wife and I um, a panic attack, like we're being back at school, going through all the curriculum and everything that was coming through on, that, on the app and all the different yeah, activities right. that they had to do. I started stressing out just, just sort of looking at it. But um, look, the, the kids, they adapt, they, they, yeah. they've jumped straight into it and they're, they're doing really well. In fact, uh, my son, Elijah, who's seven, he uh, had a Zoom meeting. They set up Zoom meetings wow. in the class. So one for um, a bunch of the girls and one for a bunch of the boys in, in his year two class. And um, it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. So <laughs> um, yeah, we accidentally we logged in and the link we were sent accidentally sent us to the girls chat, right? Yeah. So we've dialed in and there's all these girls and they've just started and they're all just chatting away. Rah, 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 rah. Oh, look, we're wow. in my room, I'm doing this, doing this. It's like, great, this awesome, awesome activity. <laughs> and crazy. then um, uh, we got the right link for the first boys, for, yeah. for his mates. So we logged out, went back into, into the boys one it was just dead silence. Oh, There's about like five boys in the sitting there like this. No idea what to do. <laughs> I was like, buddy, talk, talk. And one of them was like, oh, is that your room? <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. And so it's like this, it's like this awkward silence. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, until eventually the ice broke and it all came yeah. out. But it was, it was funny to see him interacting like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Which, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool day and age. I mean, if this thing was to happen any other time, mm -hmm. it might be a bit difficult. Yeah, you know, life yeah, group definitely. by pigeon. Yeah. Or yeah, you know, that, that would be hard. Snail mail. Snail mail? Yeah. Dynamic discussion yeah. over the postal postal waves. It's a really long process, it would it be is. snail it mail. Is. Yes. But yeah. deep relationships, which oh, is important. definitely. Yeah. No, look, we're blessed. It's been it's been good. It's been fun. Yeah, um, awesome. Uh, and look, things here are, are, are still going from strength to strength, yeah. like, especially with the pantry. Yeah, um, wow. For all of you who haven't heard, we're still open with the pantry. We've set up this unbelievable drive-through mm. system in order to, to continue operating, to continue to give um, food and hampers out to those who need it most in this, um, in this current day and age, yeah. the restrictions that we have. So it's all no contact, it's all done through drive-through. And uh, I was just talking to, to Bev earlier and she said that uh, in March, we fed 6,795 families. Wow, So that is crazy. That's, uh, that's, that's a huge number. Yeah. That's just, you know, in a time when people need it the most, um, to be able to continue to do that is just, uh, it's, a, it's a blessing. Yeah. It's a great thing for the community. So um, if you're in need, head to the Facebook page and have a look and uh, find out the details on that. Yeah, definitely. We've only got five minutes left to go. Oh, wow. That, that is insane. We, you should start, make sure you invite people, right? Because yeah. it's now the day and age and how easy is the, this is to invite people. Yeah. You literally, what do we have to do? We just send a link, right? Yeah, well, just, yeah, just just send the link and people can join in. I mean, they don't even have to get out of their bed like me last week. It was, uh, it's so simple. And I mean, there's nothing to be scared of either because I mean, all they have to do is go on their phone. Yeah. They can tune in for the first time, third time, whatever. Yeah. It's so easy. It I is. love how easy that concept is. All we have to do is just grab the link, grab a photo, even invite previous to next week. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, so what is next to... week? Oh, wow. Next week. Good segue. Oh, so good. What is next week, Luke? A uh, little thing called Easter. Oh, wow. Easter. Already? Yeah, already. Yeah, wow. Crazy. 
So normally a big, uh, big event, big service, yeah. big um, put on the hot cross buns, do the whole thing, and it's amazing. And, and a lot of people go to church yeah. for Easter. It's yeah. one, of the, one of those holidays, Easter and Christmas, that yeah, don't definitely. normally come to church, but but they want to get along to that. Mm. And this year, I think, has got to be no exception. Um, yeah, definitely. We, we can't put on the big service, and we, we can't make the hot cross buns for you guys, but. Um, but we're going to have Easter at home, and it's going to be an incredible, yeah. uh, incredible service. And I believe uh, Leon Lim is going to be preaching. Oh wow! What a gun! Powerhouse. He's got the heavy hitters. Oh, definitely. So he's, he's got the mixture. He's got comedy, and he's got he smarts and wits, and it's just, just like it's a good a match. Oh, great balance. Genius. Yeah. Genius. So look, it's going to be I'm unbelievable. Pumped. Yeah. Invite people. It's like, it, yeah, like that's, you said. That's, that's the service to invite people to, isn't it? And there's never been an easier way to invite no, people. No, exactly. It's not, hey, come on, you've got to get out of bed, come come with Drag your whole family along. It's so easy. Just put so, it on the main TV. Bro, chuck this in your phone. Yeah, definitely. Enter. Yeah. So it's going to be really, really awesome. Um, we're very, very excited for that. And, yeah. uh, and you know what? I think in this, this sort of, with everything that's going on, I've been trying to find some of the little stories like that, the little positive things that have come out of the isolation yeah, and totally. the restrictions and everything. One of the coolest things I heard um, this week, Chicago Zoo, right? Obviously shut down. Yeah. You, can't, yeah. you can't go there, the, yeah. the, their aquarium. Um, they released the penguins. <laughs> Dead, this is this is no, no word of a lie. They released the penguins to be able to wander around and visit the other exhibits and see all the wow. animals. <laughs> That is wild. And I was accompanied by staff, and the restriction measures don't don't count for penguins. Just, just get to hang out. Yeah. Well, that's true. I mean, yeah. animals have no effect to this this whole thing. So, so anim just let the animals go free. You know. So I mean, Damn, penguins got a good. Thing hopefully, out of it. the tigers weren't a bit like, oh, what's that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just no. never know. Yeah, yeah. I probably wouldn't be letting the tigers out. No, it's probably not a good idea, is it? Wow, <laughs> we only have two and a half minutes to go. I am so pumped for this next a live stream that we're about to go on and, and get this whole experience again mm. and it's just so exciting that we can actually do this from so many I can I can do this with my family hey even on a last Sunday my family there was four different live streams going on really how cool is that that so many people can be plugged into so many different areas but the church is still moving oh it's awesome it's, it's actually incredible well I think it's just a living testimony to the fact that church is not a building no definitely we love this building yeah we, we can't wait to be back in this yeah. building with it with all of you guys but but this isn't the church i mean no. the, the church is is this the church yeah. is what you guys are doing right now yeah, definitely. in your living rooms um it, it can be confusing for the kids it was for mine last yeah. week because we're saying guys guys stop it we're in church they're going what are you talking about we're in our living room you know? <laughs> it's, it's like no 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 this is church and uh yeah but i think it's good to to, to just kind of have that mindset yeah, yeah definitely. To, to just be like, look, we're in church right now. Yeah. Um, and and I think part of that is more than just like watching. And and, and if you mm. uh, if you can't sort of jump on and chat, that's fine as well. Um, you're definitely still part of this, but yeah. it's a whole other experience to be able to jump on and to be able to interact with people and, uh, and yeah, you know, we've totally. got people praying over 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 you and yeah. requesting prayer and yeah, it's, a, it's a great thing. So if you can, if you've got the capacity to yeah. be able to dial in on your laptop or a computer or yeah. even on your phone, um, jump in, say yeah. hi, um, jump in the comments now and yeah, definitely. And, and say good day. Um, yeah. uh, Tash was ho one of the hosts last week, yeah, right. which, which was helping people, praying for people, yeah, yeah, making yeah, them feel comfortable. And, uh, and she said that um, she, uh, Nearly, it nearly couldn't work because she was trying to put too many emojis in. She, oh, she right. said her emoji game you know, stepped up. It, it was just wow. I don't think the church online platform could even handle it. Yeah, so, right. The emojis um, were too much. Probably too much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So she's going to take a step back on the emoji game this week. Oh well, I think she's probably um, just got the platform to be upgraded. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, well that's I'm, I'm going to use the emojis this week then. Get on the emojis. Yeah, yeah. And that prayer feature is really cool. It's just a click of a button and someone's with you. Yeah, so we got that, that's awesome. We have awesome. real people, real hosts, yeah. volunteers that are waiting there and will pray with you over yeah. you. Prayer yeah. is just as powerful over a chat as it is in person. Yeah, that's it. There's no difference. Definitely. Have we got? 18 seconds wow. to go, 15 seconds to How go. How good. And uh, we've got uh, Pastor Brooke coming up to, uh, oh, to awesome. MC. So we've got the dream team going today. Yeah, Pastor really Brooke do. Pastor Dan. It is the dream team. It is the dream team. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the real team. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're excited. So, so hey. Pumped.
stay on, check these guys out, and uh, we're so happy that you joined us, and uh, we can't wait to see you after the service. Yeah. Signing out. Yeah. Well, good morning, church, and welcome to Reality Online. It is so good to be here with you this morning, thinking that it's only been three weeks today since we last met physically in this space. It feels like months, and I cannot wait to be here with you physically in person, lifting up the name of Jesus together again. But until then, how important and crucial it is to, to use this platform and this space to gather and to anchor ourselves on His Word and His truth through this season. And I'm so glad that you are here to do that with us this morning. And right now, we have a testimony that's going to encourage you in your faith. So get ready. And uh, I know you're going to be so blessed by this. So I am currently 37 weeks pregnant, um, but as many of you know, having walked the journey with me, at 32 weeks, things started going very wrong. Uh, I ended up in hospital with gallstones, but what it indicated on the Friday when I just hit 32 weeks was that she was not growing well. They did a scan and they said, look, she is not thriving. She's three percentile of what she should be. She has issues with the cord flow, which means that she has, might have brain damage. We need to get her out. We need to get her out now. And um, so what we're going to do is admit you. We're going to start pumping you with these hormones that mature her lungs quickly and then pull her out on Tuesday. And I was reeling because I had no um, I didn't realise this was going on. I didn't realise that there was even a problem. Um, but it just didn't sit right because she's been such a miracle this whole way along and God has, has led her through this amazing journey so far. I was like, mm, I'm not okay pulling her out when she's so young. They were talking about having her in an incubator for four weeks. Um, and with the, the virus coming round and amping up at the time, I was thinking if she's got underdeveloped lungs, that puts her at even more risk. And so there were all these worries and concerns just consuming me at the time. But I'm standing on faith going, no, God, this is your child. This is what you've led this to be. I cannot believe that this is all going wrong. So I started activating all my church friends, started getting in touch with everyone and going, we need prayer for this. She needs to stay in there. She needs to grow in there. And so um, later that weekend, I really pushed for another scan. They still were adamant, we've got to pull her out. Um, and so in the second scan, it showed that her blood cord flow was back up to normal, which was awesome, but her amniotic fluid had radically decreased. And they couldn't explain why, they didn't understand amniotic fluid just doesn't vanish. But then they were talking about the fact that having low fluid could mean having a stillbirth. So then they were like, no, we have to get her out on Tuesday. And it just didn't sit right with me. So I, I continued to push. I'm like, no, I'm believing that God is performing a miracle here. Everyone is praying. I've got people from different churches praying about this. And I said, on the Tuesday morning, they wanted to induce me that day. I said, can we do one more scan? And the scans came back that everything was back up to normal. The amniotic fluid was good. The, the blood cord flow was good. She's just still really tiny. So um, they said, okay, well, look, we're not sure what's happening. We, we're scratching our heads a little bit here. Maybe there was a problem with the scans, but we're gonna send you home and get you back next week and see how she's growing. If she's growing reasonably well, we'll leave her in and we'll go week by week. So that's what happened. I went back, she's grown from the three percentile to the 10th percentile, which is amazing, and all her levels were good. And then the following week I came back and she had grown up to the 40 percentile. So she is thriving in there now. All her fluids and, and everything is looking really good. They actually said, you are cleared to continue your pregnancy without any more scans. We're happy she's back to normal. We don't understand how, we don't understand why. And I'm going, I know why, because God is a miracle working God. And so, um, yes, now I am 37 weeks and very much looking forward to meeting her. Wow, what an incredible testimony from Kim Green. I'm so personally encouraged in my faith by that story. And despite, you know, the circumstances we face, despite even what doctor's reports are saying or how we're feeling in the natural, that God is on the move, that He is mighty and He's powerful and He can turn things around in an instant. And how powerful it is that when we pray, He hears our prayer and He answers our prayer. So, you know, I'm encouraged by that, that, you know what, we've got situations and circumstances we're facing, but as we come to Him and we pray and we bring our knees before Him, He is a good Father and He is right there to answer and bring about an incredible God result for us. So right now, we're going to stand to our feet
seat, can I ask you in your living rooms to begin to get yourself ready and poised and positioned to, to lift up your praise to God and give Him all the praise that is due and worthy to His name. And, uh, and let's hand right now over to the worship team in Jesus' name.
Hey, Reality Church, how are you today? So good to have you with us for Reality Online. This is our second service that we're doing online. And last week was awesome. So many people tuned in. So many people were able to access the service. And I loved seeing the live chat and everybody just you know, commenting and chatting to each other and catching up. And hey, let's face it, we were eager to catch up because we haven't seen each other. And so today I'm looking forward to more of the same. And uh, hey, encourage you to just like shout out what, what God's speaking to you during the message and, you know, post the scripture, um, you know, be engaged. It's going to be a great, great time as we gather around the Word of God today. And I believe that God's going to speak to you today. I really believe that whether you're tuning in for the first time or whether you're part of our church community at Reality, I really believe God wants to speak to you today. I believe God's Word is powerful. It's alive. It's not about what I'm going to say, but it's about what He wants to say from His Word. And so right now, I'm just going to pray as we get into the Word of God. And I believe God's going to do something powerful in your life. So Father, right now, I thank you for this moment. I thank you, Lord, for this, this different moment that we're in. But I thank you for the power of your word that is constant no matter what moment we're in and no matter what way we are engaging with it. I thank you that your word has the power to save. Your word has the power to heal. And your word has the power to speak to our situation with razor sharp accuracy and to change our lives. And so we open our hearts and we welcome your word, God, right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, and everyone said, Amen. Well, hey, so good to be with you. And today, we are starting a brand new series, and the series is called Anchored. And you know, we're living in a time that is very shaky, very uncertain, a lot of change. Every person is experiencing a different element of change in their life, and, and some of it is scary, let's face it. Some of it is very daunting. Some of it is very unsettling. It's very disruptive. But I believe that in this season, God wants us to find our anchor point in Him. And so we're calling this series Anchored. And I believe that through this series, we're going to discover how we as Christians, as people, if you're joining us and you, you don't know Jesus yet, I believe you can discover this as well, that there is a place that we can be anchored firmly, securely in God and in who He says we are and in His Word. And that anchoring will, will firm our footing for the bumpy road ahead. And we are in uncertain times and there are some speed bumps and there are some, you know, there are some obstacles ahead and challenges that we're facing right now, but we can be anchored in Him. I want to read you a powerful passage from Proverbs as we just open up God's Word today. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 25, it says, The wicked are blown away by every stormy wind, but when a catastrophe comes, the lovers of God have a secure anchor. Don't you love that? When a catastrophe comes, the lovers of God have a secure anchor. Friends, I want to tell you today that even in the midst of this catastrophe that is, you know, affecting the whole entire world right now, we as lovers of God, people who know God, can find a secure anchor in Him for our lives. So I wanted to ask you today, has there ever been a moment where you have just really lost your peace, like completely. Like you, you just found yourself in a panic, 
found yourself in a place where you just felt like peace was so far away from you at, the mo- at that time. I remember catching a flight a few years ago to Sydney and it was a busy morning and I think I was catching around a lunchtime flight and, you know, typical me style, I hadn't packed yet and so I was getting up in the morning and I was, I was packing and I didn't eat breakfast and so I was driving to the airport and parked my car or had an Uber or something, I can't remember, but I, I got in. The first thing I was like, I gotta, once I've checked in, I'm getting food, I'm getting coffee. And so I got coffee and, you know, the coffee came out first before the burger came out and so I started doubting the coffee and then all of a sudden it was time to get boarding for the flight and so I went and I, I boarded the flight and I still hadn't even eaten anything yet and I've, by the time I sat down I'd finished my coffee and, and, and then I sat down I got a window seat that day and I'm not a huge fan of the window seat I like the aisle I don't know about you but I like to spread my legs out a little bit if I can and just you know and so here I am crammed in the window seat and for some reason I started having a panic attack I mean I've never really had a panic attack before but for some reason I found myself just just peeking out, like I was freaking out. I, I felt like I was about to die or something. And I'd completely lost my peace. And I was like, you know, frantically looking around and trying to see if I could stand up. And I ended up getting out of the aisle and walking around and trying to find somewhere else to sit because I just couldn't, I couldn't fathom sitting there squashed into a corner because I'd lost my peace and I was having a panic attack. And I think it was the coffee and the fact that I hadn't eaten anything that was causing it. But, you know, there are different moments in our life where we can find ourselves losing our peace. And if you've ever been there before, it's not a good feeling to feel a sense of such anxiety and panic and, and unknown about what's about to happen. And, and in this case, you know, it's kind of funny because it was coffee that took away my sense of peace that day. But right now, there are so many different things that we're facing that if we allow them to, they could potentially try to rob our peace. People right now have lost jobs and businesses have shut down and um, the future can look completely unknown. And maybe you've found yourself at this time feeling like, man, I feel like I've lost my peace. Well, today I'm here to tell you that if you felt like that, God wants to give you a certainty in his peace. And often we can live with the certainty in the peace of the things that are happening in our life, the job that we do have the house that we do have, the future that we have planned. And when those things fall apart, we need to find a greater place to anchor ourselves in peace. And in this season, God wants to teach us how to anchor ourselves into His peace so that no matter what's going on around us, we can have peace even in the midst of the storm. I don't know what storm, you're, what part of the storm, we're all feeling this global storm right now. I'm not sure exactly what part is is, is hitting you the hardest right now. But I'm here to tell you today that in the midst of this storm, God wants you to have an anchor in Him, an anchor of peace. And so today, I want to read to you an awesome story where Jesus shows up in the middle of a storm and gives His peace. And I want to teach you today three ways that you can anchor yourself in the peace of God in this season. And so we're going to go to um, Mark chapter 4. And the Bible says in verse 35 that as evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. They'd been on one side of the lake. They'd been ministering, preaching, healing people. And Jesus said, hey guys, it's time to go to the other side of the lake. And so they took Jesus into the boat and started out leaving the crowds behind. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat and it began to fill with water. A fierce storm rose up. High waves began breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. Metaphorically, this sounds a little bit like what we're all experiencing right now. You see, I don't know about you, I I feel like I've been in moments where I've seen storms off in the distance, and I've seen storms at a safe distance, and... I've been able to just find my security that I believe that that won't touch me. That God is going to protect me from that storm. But this storm wasn't at a safe distance for these guys. This storm was literally up all around them. The high waves were now crashing into their boat. Water was filling up their boat. I think that it's safe to say that every single one of us have in some way felt the waves and the wind of this storm that we're in right now 
crashing onto our boats and into our lives in some way, shape or form. I think we can identify with the disciples here. They're, they're, feeling, they're, they're feeling this storm literally on their doorstep. This storm is, is crashing into their lives. The waves and the wind and the water is filling up their boat. This storm was a disruption to them getting to their destination. And many of us are experiencing that right now. While this was all going on, while this storm was raging, in verse 38, the Bible says, Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. Isn't that a crazy picture? Here's the craziest storm maybe that these guys have ever experienced. They don't know what to do. They're freaking out. And the, the storm is lapping up on the boat. And yet Jesus, <laughs> Jesus is asleep at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. Now, I don't know about you, but if you've got kids and you, you know what it's like when the house has basically lost any sense of peace. You know what it's like when the kids are racing through and they're yelling and they're shouting and they're, you know, and, and it's like, man, when are we going to get some peace in this house? But then when they go to bed finally at night and you walk into their room and you see them just out to it on the pillow and you walk through the house and you're just like, oh, this is what it's like to have peace in the house. You know what I'm saying? When there's sleep, there is peace. And here's Jesus in the midst of this crazy storm. He's asleep. Why? Because Jesus is at peace. Jesus is our peace. Jesus carries peace. And in this moment where the disciples had lost their peace, they actually hadn't lost their peace because peace was with them. Peace was with them. Here's the disciples in the midst of this crazy storm, but with them in the middle of the storm was perfect peace. And his name is Jesus. And with us right now, no matter where, what you're facing, no matter how this storm of COVID-19 is affecting your life, there is one thing I can tell you today that is sure, that with you in your boat right now, with you in your life right now, is the peace of God. His name is Jesus. He's with you, and He's ready for you to anchor into Him in the midst of this storm. Jesus was with them in the boat. Verse 39 when Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, silence, be still. Another translation says he said to the waves, peace, be still. And suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. And he asked them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? And the disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and waves obey him. When the disciples found themselves in a place that they could not fathom the storm, they could not comprehend all that was going on around them, they found themselves being anchored in Jesus and finding peace. Can I tell you today, friend, that in the midst of all that's going on, Jesus is your peace. The Bible says that Jesus is our peace and He wants to bring peace into your world. He wants to give you an anchor point for peace internally so that all the anxiety and all the fear and all the worry and all the feelings of being overwhelmed in this season can be silenced and can be stilled. Because when Jesus speaks to the storm, the waves subside, the wind has to stop, and the calm, the calmness of His peace will begin to surround our lives. And so Jesus is our peace. Jesus is in the boat with us. But the question today is, how can we anchor into Him? How do we anchor into Him intentionally? Because in this season, this is not a season just to see, oh, I'll see what will happen in my relationship with God, just see how I get through. No, this is a time to be intentional and to intentionally anchor our lives into Jesus in a greater way. And so I want to give you three quick things of how to anchor into the peace that is found in Jesus in this moment. Because right now in the midst of this storm, he's in the boat, he's asleep. He's not asleep in the sense of not knowing what's going on. As a picture of peace, He's with us. He's not worried. He's not concerned. He's ready to give us perfect peace in the midst of this storm. For Ephesians says, He Himself is our peace. So how do I anchor myself into the peace of God for my life? You know, every boat owner, every seaman has to discover and learn how to anchor their boat properly. It, it sounds simple, right? Like it sounds so easy that, oh yeah, I'm just going to anchor the boat. I'm just going to throw the anchor out. But did you know that there's entire books written on how to anchor? There's actually like 
a really, there's techniques to it. There's, there's specific craftsmanship or there's ways to learn how to anchor your boat properly so much so that they've written whole books on it. And so today, in order to anchor our life, it's something that we need to learn to do. It may not just be as basic as you think. It may not just come to you as naturally as you think. And in this time as Christians facing all sorts of uncertainty, we need to know how to, how to skillfully cast that anchor into God, cast our anchor upon Him and securely anchor ourselves so that we don't have drag, so we're not going to drift away from our place of peace, but we will be anchored solid, firmly, securely into the peace of God for our lives. And so first of all, the first thing I want to say, how to anchor, the first way to anchor into the peace of God is to enter into His presence. <laughs> enter into His presence. You know, I love that Jesus is always with us. His invisible presence is always with us. He is in our boat with us. But he was also in the boat with the disciples when they first saw the storm and they spent, I don't know how long, they spent a long time maybe just wrestling with the storm on their own. But it wasn't until they entered into the presence of Jesus. They went to where Jesus was. They woke him up and they talked to him. They said, Jesus, they called on his name. And in that moment was when peace began to come into their boat. Jesus is always with us. His presence is always with us. But there are moments that we can experience His presence and we can step into a tangible reality of His presence. And I believe that that is a place of anchoring ourselves into the peace of God. The Bible says in Psalm 100, As you serve Him, verse 2, Be glad and worship Him. Sing your way into His presence with joy. I want you to think about that for a moment. Sing your way into His presence with joy. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. And be thankful to Him and bless His holy name. Sing your way into His presence. His presence is always with you, but we got to make a choice to enter into His presence. There's a famous book that's been around for a long time called Practicing the Presence of God. The presence of God is always with us, but there is, there is a conscious decision for us to step into His presence. And let me tell you, friend, it comes when we worship. When we worship God, when we, when we begin to magnify Him, like Psalm 100 says, and we enter into His presence with singing, when we enter His courts with praise, we can experience the tangible presence of God. And I'm telling you, every time that I decide in my lounge room to grab my guitar or to turn on my favorite worship song and lift up my voice and sing His name and declare His greatness and declare who He is, I experience the tangible presence of God that leaves me with a greater sense of peace. It anchors me in peace. It anchors me in a place of security where I know, man, He is so close and He is right here and it doesn't matter what storm is coming around me. He is with me right now and nothing can harm me. Nothing can take me out. Nothing can derail me because I might be on a, I might be on a journey to somewhere and there might be just some disruptions, but I know the one who is with me is greater than the storm. And if He's with me, then I have peace. This place of the presence of God and experiencing the presence of God tangibly, it, it, it anchors us in peace. It, it really does. And so I want to encourage you in this season to practice the presence of God. Practice anchoring in to peace by entering into His presence. When you, enter, when you step into His presence, you experience overwhelming peace. I want to encourage you to try it today. I want to encourage you to take a moment. You know, you've been in church and you, you've experienced the presence of God in a corporate worship set, setting. And, and that's exactly what we do in those corporate moments is we enter in. We enter into His presence that is already with us. We, we focus in and we experience His presence. But that doesn't have to just not be a part of your life now. Now in your home, it becomes... The, the church service is in your home. You know, your lounge room can become the place of encountering the presence of God in worship. And I want to encourage you to practice every day the presence of God. Enter into His presence. You know what you can do? You can say, God, right now I'm coming into your presence. I'm coming in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come and just enjoy your presence right now. And as we enjoy the presence of God, as we just anchor our lives into His presence, we will find ourselves in the most incredible, overwhelming 
peace, the peace of God. So how do we anchor? We, we anchor by entering into His presence. You know, another way we can anchor ourselves and, and hoist the anchor into the peace of God is by remembering His promises. Remembering His promises. There are so many promises in the Word of God for us that really speak to every situation of our lives. I want to read a promise from Psalm 91 in a moment, which has been one of my go-to promises in this season that I've been going to and I've been just reminding myself of the promise of God. I've been reminding God, even though He doesn't need reminding, but as I remind God, I'm reminding myself, I'm encouraging myself, building my faith. There are so many, there are so many promises found in the Word of God. And let's go to Psalm 91 right now. We're going to check out this incredible promise and how powerful the promises of God can be for us in anchoring ourselves in peace. Psalm 91, verse 1, it says, Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. What does that sound like? That sounds like the presence of God. That sounds like entering into the presence. Those who live in that shelter of the Most High, in that secret place, will find themselves at rest, find themselves at peace under the shadow of the Almighty. I declare about the Lord, He alone is my refuge. He's my place of safety. He's my God and in Him I can trust. For He will rescue me from every trap and protect you from deadly diseases. He will cover you with His feathers. He will shelter you with His wings. His faithful promises, listen to this, His faithful promises are your armor and protection. You know, when you clothe yourselves in the promises of God, when you remember and recall and speak out the promises of God, you are clothing yourself in an armor and a protection that can weather any storm. You are clothing yourselves in a power that is so much greater than any catastrophe, than any uncertainty, because the promises of God will anchor us in the peace of God. So whenever I'm facing a challenge, maybe I'm facing a moment where I feel like, man, the enemy's coming against me. I, I go to the promise in Isaiah, you know, which tells me that no weapon formed against me can prosper. No weapon formed against me can prosper. And I thank God, I thank you, Lord, that you are keeping me from every weapon of the enemy. I am protected. I go to Psalm 91. Lord, you are my refuge and my strength. I am under the shelter of your wing. Your promises are my protection. I'll go to, to the New Testament and I'll find scriptures where, where Paul encourages us to remember that. Our God shall supply all of our need. When I'm facing financial difficulty or uncertainty, I'm going to go and remember that promise. God, I thank you that you promise that you will provide every single need that I have. That's something I can stand on. And so, Lord, I'm going to stand on that promise. And as I declare His promises, as I speak them out boldly, I don't mutter them under my breath. I don't, I, honestly, I don't just be like, oh, thank you, Lord. No, I'm going to stand and I'm going to declare I'm going to hold up my shield of protection in the promises of God. I thank you that no matter what's going on around me, you are my provider. You are my source. When it comes to, you know, what's happening with finance right now, I'm going to God. I'm saying, God, you are my provider. And I don't need to understand how God will provide. All I need to know is that God will provide. And as I remind myself of the promises of God, I remember His promises. I declare them. I hold them up like a shield. I experience the peace of God. Of God, and you can do that today. I want to encourage you to search through the scriptures this week, today. There is so much great technology. BibleGateway.com, one of my favorite websites. The Bible app, U version on your phone. You can search through and find promises of God that you can speak out and declare in this season. And I'm telling you, I promise you, as you speak them out, you will find that protection of the promises of God coming around you, and you'll experience. Your life being anchored into the peace of God by declaring His promises. You find yourself anchored into the peace of God. And thirdly today, the third way to anchor ourselves in the peace of God is to hand over everything to Him in prayer. Hand over everything to God in prayer. It's so easy in this time that we're living in to be mulling over all sorts of information, all sorts of statistics, all sorts of news, all sorts of, of what people are saying, all sorts of things that different people are saying. And honestly, it can get tiring. 
But instead of doing that, what we can do is actually hand over everything to God in prayer. Everything. Everything that's trying to rob you of peace. I told you my story about coffee trying to rob me of peace, which is kind of amusing. But right now, there are real things that will be trying to come and rob you of your peace. And right now, in this moment, to anchor our lives in His peace, we got to take that thing, and instead of trying to carry it around and try and juggle it and try to, you know, figure it all out in our own head, we got to, we got to cast that thing over to Him in prayer. we got to hand over those things to Him in prayer. Whether it's about your job, whether it's about your family, whether it's about your health, whether it's about your emotions in this season, whatever it is, everything, let's hand everything over to Him in prayer. Everything. Jesus is asleep in the midst of this deadly storm. Why? Because everything He, he had in, in the hands of the Father, everything concerning His life, He had entrusted into the hands of the Father through prayer. Jesus lived this lifestyle of prayer. So when situations arose, He, he, didn't, he didn't freak out because He was anchored in the peace of of his father. And so for us in this season, handing over everything to God in prayer is, is, is how we're going to anchor ourselves into the peace of God. I love my, my granddad, my pop. He used to sing this hymn and it was awesome. And I was reminded of it this week as I was thinking about the peace of God. And it went like this. I'm not going to sing it for you. Sorry. I'm just going to tell you the lyrics. It went like this, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. And oh, what peace we often forfeit. And oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. And I was thinking about this scripture today in Philippians Verse chapter four, verse six, that really speaks to this, and you know, really encourages us to do the, what this song is is encouraging us to do. It says, "Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything." Let's just back that up and read that together. Maybe you could say it with me from your home or wherever you are right now. Say this with me: "Don't worry about anything." Instead, pray about everything. How am I going to anchor my life into the peace of God? I'm going to start by choosing deliberately, intentionally, habitually to not worry about anything, but instead everything that's causing me worry and stress and fear and anxiety, I'm going to choose to take a hold of that thing and I'm going to intentionally take it to Him in prayer. I'm going to see myself offloading it to Him. You know what? His shoulders are stronger than yours. His, strong, his shoulders are stronger than mine. Jesus is asleep in the midst of the storm while we're frantically running around. But if we take those things that are trying to rob our peace and joy, and instead of mulling over them all day, we cast them to Him in prayer. It might only be a prayer for one minute. It might only be a prayer for two minutes. Wherever you are, to pause and take a moment and say, I'm going to cast everything to Him in prayer. And this stress about my finance right now, this stress about how I'm going to pay my bills, this stress about what's going on with the kids, this, this worry about the future, I'm going to take it, I'm going to name it, but I'm going to hand it to him in prayer. And guess what happens in that moment? Guess what happens in that moment? In Philippians 4 verse 6, Paul promises us the outcome of that action. He says, tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His presence, His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Isn't this an incredible promise for us? That as we choose to, to take everything that would try to rob our peace and we, we cast it to Him in prayer, we give it to Him, we talk to Him about it, the promise is that then we will experience the peace of God that passes anything we could understand. The circumstance may not change yet. The situation may not be any different after you finish praying, but on the inside, peace will be realized because we know that now the situation is not in my hands. The problem is not in my control. I'm giving it over to Him. And I know that Jesus is in my boat. He is my peace. He is with me. And I'm going to anchor my, my life into His peace. I'm going to anchor my future into His peace. I'm going to anchor my day 
into his peace. I'm going to anchor my mind into his peace. I'm going to anchor my heart into his peace because he is my peace. And he has promised me that if I cast my cares, if I take everything and I give it to him, that in that moment I will experience his peace that surpasses my understanding. And that is good news for someone today. Hey, maybe you're tuning in to reality online for the first time today and you, you don't know God. Maybe you're not a Christian. Maybe you say, I don't really go to church. I'm just checking this out. Today, maybe you're experiencing worry and fear and concern. Can I encourage you to try this out? Try talking to Jesus. He's listening. Try telling him what's going on in your life. He's ready to respond to you. He loves you so much. Let's take everything and give it to him in prayer. He will be our anchor of peace in this season. I believe that with all that's going on, God is going to cause us to be so anchored into His peace, standing firm without the weight of worry, without the restlessness of stress and anxiety because we're finding a sure place to anchor our lives into the peace of God, into Jesus who is Himself our peace. Would you join me right now in anchoring our lives into the peace of God intentionally. We're not just hoping it's going to happen. Man, I'm actually going to step in to peace. I know that if I, if I step into His presence, I know that if I remember His promises, and I know that if I, if I take everything to Him in prayer, I'm guaranteed to experience the peace of God. And I guarantee you as well that if you will put those three things to practice, you're going to have the peace of God in your world right now as a sure foundation for your anchor to anchor your life into. Hey, can we pray together right now? Why don't you join me as we pray? Father, I want to thank you so much for every person who's watching today, who is a part of this online experience. And I thank you, Jesus, that no matter what is happening in their life, your peace is coming into their world right now. Your presence, God, I thank you, is coming into their home. It's coming into their, their house. It's coming into their life right now, wherever they are, God. I thank you that your love is so great. I thank you, Jesus, that you are greater than any storm. And I thank you, Lord, that you're going to teach us in this season how to be anchored in your peace. And I believe, God, that people are going to rise up, God, so strong in the peace of God that it's going to make a huge difference in their world. It's going, to be, it's going to be a light to others. And I thank you right now for your peace and presence in Jesus' mighty name. Hey, you know what I love about Jesus in this passage is that when he got up and he spoke to the wind and the waves, things changed. And what I found is that as we anchor ourselves in the peace of God, we then have the authority in Christ to speak to storms, to speak to situations. And they will change. They will subside. Things will, will be altered as we speak out of a place of peace in Jesus. Hey, if you've been with us today and you've never accepted Christ as your Savior before, you've never put your trust in Him, I want you to, um, right now, there's going to come a button up in the chat feed. And I want to encourage you to click that, to raise your hand, and someone can pray with you. And you can let us know that you responded. We'd love to encourage you. We'd love to be on the journey with you and, uh, and help you to follow Jesus as we, as we move ahead in this time. Hey, church, bless you. Love you. Stay anchored in His peace. Have an incredible week. And we'll see you next week for Reality Online. God bless. I trust you are so encouraged by that message from Pastor Dan this morning. And right now, like we do every Sunday, we're going to give you an opportunity to give to God with your finances. And, you know, this is a special time in our service, especially in the season we're facing, because it'd be so easy in times of lack to say, you know what? I don't have much to give, so I'm going to withhold. Um, but the Bible says that, you know, he who scatters increases even more, yet the one who withholds more than is right, it leads to poverty. And this week, I've just seen people giving above and beyond what we would have expected in this time and season. And it has just been an astounding sense of people operating in faith. And, you know, giving in times of plenty, in times of fullness, and that's... That's, that's powerful in itself. But when we give in times of scarcity, when we give in times of droughts and when there's lack, it's like turning the volume up on our faith and it proclaims something very powerful to, to not only our circumstances and situations, but to the world we live in. And I want to encourage you, 
not to hold back and withhold in times of scarcity, but would you trust God with me and let your giving be like a prophetic act saying, I know you're coming through for me. I know that you see around the corner beyond what I can even see right now. And I'm giving from a position of faith that you are good and that you will provide. And then we can just watch and see the testimony of God coming into our lives and You know, I don't know about you, but I feel stirred in my faith to begin to accelerate my giving in a whole new dimension and give more than I've given before, even in circumstances when I earn less than I have before. And I want to ask you, would you join me in that, in some crazy kind of faith that says, despite what the world says, I'm going to continue to be generous, even in seasons of drought. And I know God is going to bless you. So I'm going to pray over your seed right now, and I'm trusting God to do something supernatural with that. So Father, we thank You for every person sowing financial seed into this house, Reality Church, and into Your Kingdom. And we thank You, You are faithful. And Lord God, every single need, we lift that up to You this morning. And we thank You, You're faithful to meet the needs of Your people. You're faithful, Lord God, to provide every single circumstance. And Lord God, You're the God of more than enough. And You're going to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask or think in the area of finances. And You're going to cause your church, your people to prosper even in this time. And Lord God, we thank you for the courage and the faith to continue to give even in this season in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. And we pray you would receive all the glory in Jesus' name. Can everyone say amen? Well, thank you so much for joining with us this morning. And we are going to now sign off and head over to Eli and Luke in the lobby for one last chat. Fire. Oh, so Fire good. Fire from Pastor Dan. Yeah, that was awesome. Oh, A message on peace, hey? Yeah, look, I mean, th- there's probably no greater time for us to, to have that revelation again. Oh, definitely. Of being anchored anchored in the peace of God. Oh, so definitely. It's, um, yeah, what a, f- it was a phenomenal word. Yeah. Yeah, yeah look. Um, even, even, even the worship, that whole, whole set and, and the sermon just yeah. pieced together so well for where Peace. we are right now. Pieced together. Pieced together. Yeah, I so like well, that. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Bit of a play on words. Hey, we're so excited for next week as well. Make sure that, you, you, that you're there. Yeah. Um, and uh, we're going to be doing communion as well, um, which is going to be incredible. Uh, we're going to be doing communion together. So make sure you're ready and you're prepped. So you've got, got uh, the week to organise your, your grape juice and some crackers. I hear um, uh, Captain Morgan uh, water crackers are oh. the official biblically endorsed. Okay. Uh, no, I'm and, joking, then, I'm and then Rabina is also the, the biblical. Yes, yes. It's in the uh, word. Sure. It's not yeah. really. It's not. But I mean, I they sure. are very good <laughs> uses. They're, they're good ways. It's an easy option. They are. Easy option. Yeah. For those I don't who think looking, they've gone out of stock, so that's no, good. that's right. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, make sure you're prepped and you're, you're ready for that. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna be a very powerful time together. Yeah, definitely. And, um, yeah, it's. Uh, I'm excited for it. Yeah, well, awesome. We're providing parking in your driveway. Oh, and, awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And look, right now. People can stick around and have some refreshments and they're it's true. You know, in your own kitchen. Yeah. So you provide the, your own refreshments. Yeah, that's it. Hey, yeah. hey and next week, uh, remember, tune in again. Make sure you jump on, same place, same spot. And actually the chat right now is going to be open for 30 minutes or so. So just stick around. Keep having those great conversations. Keep chatting about how great that sermon was, how, how much it encouraged you in this time. And uh, we'll see you same spot, same place next week. See you guys.